YouTube. All right, so I, <laughs> I'm sitting here coding go again, and I don't think anybody mentioned it like in, somebody mentioned sync.map to me as a way to, to get around this. And I was like, so we've been talking about concurrency a lot today and about a lot of complications that I, I don't want to get into. Um, first of all, concurrency is only established within the same runtime, right? That means the same inside of the same process. It doesn't guarantee some other process isn't going to mess with your file. That's file system locking. It's a different thing. But uh, the reason that I'm making this, this comp, uh, which I think I have open right now. So the reason I'm making this comp dash go thing and I have all of these locks and stuff in here uh, and I've done all of this and I have an internal map struct uh, and this is not the first time I mean, a lot of people have done this, right? So here's my solid thing. I embed a mutex, which has a read, write. I can do a read, write mutex if I wanted to, but in this case, it's so trivial that yeah, I don't need a read, write mutex. I can just use this one. So this is the proper way to do this. And that's not my opinion. You can read book after book. that will tell you the proper way to implement concurrency in your maps, which are not concurrent by default. Go maps are not concurrent. And if you're wondering why a read operation on a map is not concurrent, you have to understand the hashing algorithms that are implemented in order to optimize read calls to the map so that when it fetches, you know, keys that it can look at a cache first. The cache is write it, is written to, written to write it. <laughs> so, so that's why I read, that's why maps, read maps uh, are a problem. Okay. They are a real problem. So people think that maps are safe for reading as long as they don't write to it. That's a lie. That's a total lie. Don't, don't ever go on that assumption. You should never use a map in Go, period, that has anything to do with runtime concurrency without some method of ensuring concurrency. And the simplest, of course, is to embed a mutex and then have something that wraps it. So here's my, here's my map down here that I lock and change. I got some metadata on the top of the map. It's a very common idiom, by the way. This is not original. I mean, people have done this a lot all over the place. And then you put a mutech in there and you just you just make sure that when you do your read and writes and stuff that you, you know, you lock it. So this is the way to do this. So this video is not about the right way to do it. It's about the wrong way to do it. But I want to show you the right way first. So the right way to do this is to, to embed a lock and then you go ahead and... Uh, you go ahead and you set your lock and you lock it and then you defer the unlock. This is very idiomatic go. Uh, the defer the unlock is up front. Sometimes you might want to wrap it like I've done here. And then because I want to do another operation, this write operation has a read write lock in it as well. Uh, the defer would not work here because in fact, this would cause lock contention because the write also has a read has a lock in it. And if I had done that defer, it would have done it after the, or, you know, it would have called it and it would have, the defer happens after the whole function finishes. So it would have tried to call right and then it would have already had it locked and it would have been a contention. It would have blocked. So sometimes you want to wrap it. Sometimes you want to defer it like this. If you don't, if, if you don't have any question about whether there's going to be locking going on, you can do this this kind of idiomatic way of doing it. That's the right way to, to deal with a map that you want to add concurrency. So, um, yeah. And so the, uh, the way that people... So beginners coming to go all the time. So you're like looking for a current map. You find out maps are not concurrent. Uh, you're sort of pissed off because God, I want, you know, everything is just concurrent in X and Y language or whatever. But, and, and so you go out looking there and sure enough, you're like, you find sync.map. All right. And this is, this is your first mistake is like not reading the docs about it. So we're going to actually read the docs about sync.map. And, and it's going to become really clear why you should never use it. There's, there's the, the isolated use case for wanting to use this is so tiny that you should probably just never do it and always do your own encapsulated map that you have full control over because you have control at that point, right? Yes, you have to write getters and setters and all that stuff, unfortunately. You still have to do that, right? Unless you're gonna expose your own locks and let your users lock it or whatever, but whatever. So so map is like a Go map interface interface, but it is safe for concurrent use by multiple Go routines without additional locking coordination, load stores and deletes some more in time. Uh, my stepson showed me this video of a really great YouTuber, I forgot his name though, who was just going off. He made a video where he deliberately did a test and he did in the first 30 seconds of the video, he deliberately said the wrong thing. And then the entire 15 minute video after that is talking about the right way to do it. 
And he got his comment fields were chuck full of people throwing him out, unsub, you stupid idiot, all this stuff because they didn't watch more than 30 seconds of the video. And that is exactly the kind of mentality people have going into this. They read the first paragraph and they leave. <laughs> they leave. They think they think it's all fine. They think, oh yeah, this is what I want. And they're off and running and they're coding it and they're coding it wrong. And you're not going to do that because you watched this video and you made it to this second. The map type is specialized. Most codes should use a plain, here it is. Most codes should use a plain go map instead uh, with separate locking or coordination. And by coordination, you can do concurrency with you know, channels and there's lots of other ways, but locking is the simplest for most people to get their head around. For better type safety and to make it easier to maintain other variants along with the map content. So once again, it's a better idiom. They tell you right in the docs, in the standard documentation, don't use this. You probably don't want it. You probably want a regular old struct that embeds a mutex and a map, and then you have more control of the whole thing. Uh, and then it says, this particular map, uh, the first line should say, don't use this. Agree, Tony Wah. Uh, the map type is optimized for two common use cases, neither of which are going to be common. When the entry for the given key, so let's say foo equals bar, right, is only ever written once. Nobody reads this. So this map, you can completely dismiss this map type unless you're creating a map where you only want to write the value one time, in which case you probably should use a constant. <laughs> I have no idea why this thing is even in the standard library. I really don't, but read many times. Okay. So this particular map has been optimized to be read many, 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 many times, but only, only written once. So you write it once and then you read lots and lots of times. So the, ha the underlying hash code is there to do that. Uh, as in caches that only grow. Now, that is a model that you might need, but it's not the model you think you want. Most of the time you want uh, like a Redis, you know, kind of implementation inside your code. You just want key value store and that's what I'm making. That's what comp-go is. Or two, when multiple Go routines read, write, and overwrite entries for disjointed sets of keys. In these two cases, use of map may, I love this, uh, may significantly reduce lock contention compared to go map to a go map paired with a separate mutex. So there are these like really, really isolated performance cases where you've got really intense concurrent reads going on, on data that has never been written more than once. That's what this thing was done. So underneath the hood, in case you're wondering, this is, this has got an entirely different hashing algorithm that's been implemented in order to not only do that, but it's, it's also, it's also been, hyper optimized for reads can you use it for generic you know run-of-the-mill sorts of things yeah you can but it says right there that you shouldn't so the zero map is empty and ready for use um a map must not be copied after first use did you see this you can't copy the map you can anyway because maps are references anyway but but so there's a million reasons not a million three not to use this so don't do it just say no just say no and do what I talked about at the beginning of the video. I'm reading comments here for a second. Uh, yeah, and if you have if you have performance issues, yeah. So if you had performance issues due to law contention, okay, then you do some benchmarking on that, and then you say, I wonder if sync.map can help us with this specific case. And at that point, you're like so far down the road of your development that you're no longer thinking. I wonder if I should use this map up front. So the default decision up front is use a map with an embedded mutex and, you know, read uh, a get and set interface that, that allows you to change the values. Just do that and you'll be happy and good. Life will be good. <laughs> Enough of that video.